Good afternoon. My name is Nisha Katona and this afternoon I'm going to be showing you how to make a butternut squash curry. Um, just to tell you a little bit about the way we're going to do it, we're going to do it according to Hindu principles. So it's not the kind of food you'd ordinarily get, ordinarily get in, in restaurants. It's cooked according to the Ayurvedic principles. Ayurveda was a, a Hindu treatise on health centuries ago and it's, it's one that has dictated the way that Hindus um, cook their food throughout India. We're going to be doing it according to a Bengali tradition. Before we start, if I can just explain that every vegetable dish that you cook um, in a Hindu kitchen has three main spices. We'll call it the trinity of spices and they must go into every dish. They're absolutely fundamental. They set the tone, they bring the woodiness, the flavour, the heat and the height to any dish. The first of the trinity is the most important. It's the head note spice. Today we're going to be using mustard seeds as our head note spice. Mustard is the beloved spice of the Bengalis. Chilies were not introduced to India until about the 16th century by the Portuguese and to that, up to that point the Bengalis were using mustard to give their food heat when the rest of India was using um, ground pepper. The second of the trinity is the chilli powder and the third is turmeric. If I can just show you how we use those spices to create any basic curry. This is any vegetable that you might find in your fridge, chop the rotten bits off and you've got a heart of something that can be created into something absolutely magical. Um, we start by, this is the, the most important stage, it's called the key stage. We start by adding our head note spice, today's mustard seeds. It could be jeera, for instance, but today's mustard seeds. We add it to hot oil and we allow it to crackle. Now that crackling allows the heat of the oil to um, release the perfume and the flavours of the keynote spice. That way the oil becomes flavoured and then when you add your vegetable the oil goes back into the vegetables and your entire dish becomes appropriately flavoured. Cardinal rule in Hindu cooking, it's a travesty to add raw spices to a dish. You have to crackle your spices otherwise they consider um, those spices have not been treated correctly and you might as well not be cooking. So we've crackled our spices now. We then add our vegetables. This is the second stage. They spit a lot. <clears throat> so just turn your heat down till you can manage it without an injury. And as soon as those vegetables begin to, begin to release a little bit of their water, what you would call begin to sweat, we add the second of our trinity and that is the chilli powder. We add a tiny bit of chilli powder. Now, we're not adding that for heat. We're adding that because chilli, when it's fried in oil, gives the most beautiful, almost meaty smell. Um, and it, it adds a roundness to a dish. So we're not adding it for heat. You can add more if you like your curry's hot. I don't. But it gives a roundness to the dish that's fundamental. It's one of the trinity it has to go in. As soon as that's just fried slightly in the oil, we add the third of our uh, trinity, and that's a turmeric. Turmeric powder is a ground root, and as a result, it gives a wonderful earthy quality to any curry. Um, not only that, it also gives that slight yellow colouring, and that's um, something that, that is, is fundamental for the colour and, and the texture of any curry. You add it to any meat and any vegetable curry. Um, it's also, according to Ayurveda, uh, it's got a very antiseptic quality, and so it, it's used for its medicinal purposes in India quite frequently and you have ointments made with it, but of course it gives that wonderful woody quality to your curries, it's absolutely fundamental. We allow that to cook on a low heat, we've now entered the cooking stage. This is very important, our curry is nearly done now, the minute your vegetable is done, the curry is done, it's that simple. However, in Indian cuisine, we consider the tongue to have six areas of taste. In Western cuisine, we have bitter, sour, salt and sweet areas of the tongue. The Indian philosophy is that when you're cooking, you have an additional two areas, astringency and pungency. And when you cook a dish, you must consider all of those areas and cover them. And that is why you have something called the armory. In the armory, you have sugar, or you have a sweetener of some kind, you have salt, and you have sour as your additional flavors. Now, as our curry is just finishing, you need to begin to taste it and you need to consider your armoury. So we consider them, it's not that we always use them. I'm gonna consider sugar, and I think because butternut squash is a, is a sweet vegetable anyway, it doesn't need the additional sugar, so I'm going to consider it and choose not to put that in. 
I know that I'm going to need a little bit of salt. So I add a tiny bit of salt, according to taste, of course, to your dish. It's a bit too much. Um, and stir that in. And then, of course, the last thing that I'm considering is the concept of sour. Sour is quite often a wonderful counterpoint to any sweet dishes that you're cooking. Um, for instance, lots of the vegetables have natural sugars that are released. And you find that adding a little bit of sour gives it an almost clever, magical quality. And, and really is, um, it takes the, the curry to a different level. Suddenly you find that it has those accents that you, you weren't expecting. And there's, there's layers and layers of flavour. And it's simply by the addition of sweet and sour. So we stir a little bit of lemon juice in. The other thing that Indians would use to add sour to any dish is tomato. So within your armory, you would have those three concepts, but there are different, different um, components that bring sourness and sweetness and salt to any dish. We've added the sourness. We've covered all our, our, our spices now. We've added the trinity, which of course is fundamental to all curries. We've then considered our armory. We've allowed it simply to cook till the vegetable's done to the consistency that you like it. And now we have a fully prepared butternut squash curry that I think must have taken about six or seven minutes from start to finish. I do.